Okay. And call the meeting to order. It is 731 on August 1st, 2023, the regular city council meeting of the city of West Liberty, Iowa. We have tonight for a roll call, Mayor Pro Tem, Kara McFerrin, and city council members, uh, Josh Hiltz and Dana Dominguez. I'll ask for a approval of agenda. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Move and second to approve the agenda. Did everyone get the? Um, no, only you did. Only you did. They, you have to ask for a motion that way. What? Are, make sure oh. I understand yes. what you're. Yep. So I'll do it then. Exactly what I wrote on there. You'll ask for a motion to amend it to. Approve the agenda with the two amendments, striking letter J and adding letter M. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yep. and I'm the only one who has that. Okay. So we did have one uh, uh, small last minute update to this, which is, uh, is, is allowed because of, the, because of what it is. So it, it's uh, 7 M and the change ordered amount went down for the Columbus Street sidewalk improvements. So uh, maybe you could amend your motion um, to be approving the agenda, striking letter J and adding letter M, 7J, 7M. Does that work? Yep. If you yep. amends your motion like that? Oh, okay, you want yep. me to amend my motion? Striking 7J, yep. adding 7M. Yep. For the changeover for the amount of $67,711.50. Second. Okay, moved and seconded to approve the agenda with this uh, amendment. Any discussion? Does everyone understand that? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. I'll ask for an approval of the consent agenda. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Move and seconded to approve the consent agenda. This includes the city council meeting minutes from our last meeting. Is there any discussion? Um, only the 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 in reflected in the minutes. You got it to where it was uh, left off. Ashley Smith was left off at the beginning of the minutes about council member was absent. Okay. Good parent, good Okay. Any other discussion? So that's been noted. You guys have the updated minutes in your binder. They should be on the front side, and they were updated on 724. Excellent. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda, including the city council meeting minutes. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. We'll move on to reports and uh, starting with our city engineer, Leo Foley. Okay. So I guess um, first report that isn't on there is the well number two project. You've driven by, you've seen they've started on putting the new door and the new driveway in. We're still working on the well actually on getting some of the parts that are being delayed. Uh, meaning the control panel primarily. Um, I do have a submittal that they just gave me for one, so I need to be reviewing that. And then we need to probably talk to, there's been a water problem in the, in the well house. We thought we could build the wall inside and protect the wall. Um, our contractor saying that might be tough to do. I haven't made an official visit and figure that out yet. But um, I know that the new roof is coming at some time. So we've probably got to get with Lee next week and talk about when the roof's going to come, when the wall, should we wait on the wall or not. But we're going to have them do all the work they can do except for the interior wall. And I thought we could get away with it. I've been in that place before when I saw water coming in. But I guess the last huge rain you had, the water came in a lot more. So mm. we've got to do a little, little, little more reconnaissance on that one. Well, that's that's well number two. Okay. Um, City manager Gertz, do you want to? I was just going to say, I think the bigger issue is is when we have winds with driving rain, that seems to be where the problem is at, mostly with the sections. Okay. So, um, but 
we'll I'll get together with the Yoda and we'll talk that through more thoroughly. And we've got a I guess I'm, I'll wait on the to talk about if you don't mind, I can wait to talk about um uh, Rainbow and Maxon when we talk about the change order. Sure. sure. Yeah. And Naughty Circle when we change about the schedule. Okay. Sounds good. I think that's all I have for that. Okay. Excellent. Any questions for Mr. Foley? Uh, we won't have any city staff reports tonight. We had those, uh, I guess, all of those in our last uh, meeting. Any committee meetings that need to report? Uh, to update on the on the consultant. I'll leave that up to you, Mayor. I, I, it's still in process. I don't okay. have anything to add tonight. Um, we'll move on to vendor voucher claims. Uh, accept a motion to approve the vendor voucher claims list number one. Motion to approve vendor voucher claims list number one. Second. Moved and seconded to approve vendor voucher claims list number one. Name of eight hundred ninety-seven thousand three hundred eighty-eight dollars and seventy-five cents. Questions or discussion? Somebody always has questions about that. Not today. I had one. Um, lawn care stuff. Are we not able to handle all that in house anymore? Um, which one specifically? Are you oh, there's just I I don't recall seeing all, this much lawn care on here. Is that? So we, typically the lawn care has to do with um like treatment like treating oh, okay. for Not weeds um, yeah. yeah yeah for weeds or yeah it's that's the lawn care yeah. service that we receive either in the spring that makes sense yeah. gotcha yeah. okay I was thinking it was like mowing nope we seasonal staff and staff all handle that all right. We have a motion and a second to approve the vendor budget claims list number one. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Public comments and correspondence. Is there anyone here in the room with public comments or correspondence? Okay. If none, uh, go around the room here for City Council, Mr. Uh, Councilman Schultz. I don't have anything today. All right. Yes, I would like to just um, let you all know I did bathroom duty for Rag Bright and we got so many compliments from the writer of the availability of porta potties because I thought maybe we we're going a little overboard when we were mm. discussing it, but I think we had just the right amount because I mean there were times when every single one of them was full, but the the weight was very minimal for the writers. And we were able to clean it, uh, keep them stocked and clean much better than if there was only a few of them being utilized by thousands of people. So good job on that call. I don't know who it was. It was either Sherry or Lee, but good job. <laughs> you did the right thing and we got lots of compliments. Sherry's pointing at Lee. So. <laughs> good. Yeah. Excellent. Being a former participant, yes, you know that that's a priority. <laughs> yeah. You will like this time. Yeah. That's the best kind of public comment right there. We <laughs> won the prize for best porter potty service. <laughs> I'm sure. I don't know that it's a hard one because I think the water department won a lot of, you know, mm -hmm. for the fan washing stations. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. For their water, oh, yeah. for the, water. the refill. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. That was very much appreciated. We can kind of talk about. It. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. I'm glad. Yes. Yeah, my wife and I were stationed there at the water. Uh, refill station charles from the chamber asked us to to be there and the, the crew from the water department was there monitoring that street as well so um yeah a lot of compliments yeah. um a couple of people said this is the best water station we've seen the whole <laughs> trip you know because mm -hmm. it was just it was i think it was it was the right size you know it was tall it was well situated lots of room really well. grass versus pvc because that makes a big difference in your water taste too mm -hmm. um you don't get a plastic taste from when they for what they use mm -hmm. sure um pvc leaves it kind of a just a it has a plastic taste to it so mm -hmm. that was yeah. very well done anything else no nope. okay that's more clear um I just wanted to let you know that the individuals that had the public comments last time regarding the alley on 23rd and 4th Street yeah. were 
very pleased that uh, Adam reached out and they were very happy that the city reached out to Great. help resolve the alley issues. And then I was wondering on the meeting minutes from last week, we had talked about that. Welcome West Liberty sign on Prairie. Did, mm -hmm. Was there any answer to that? The staff went out and cleaned oh. up around the sign. Okay. Um, that's what it, that's what was communicated to me that they were going to trim back all of the overgrowth the around the sign. Yeah. But I hadn't had an opportunity to look at any other history on that sign. Okay. Um, Adam just did really real quickly that while they were out doing trimming and stuff that they were going to try their best to get to get around the sign to get it cleaned up. So, okay. okay. Yeah. I did go and look at it and it does have on the bottom a uh, uh, emblem for the gun club and for lions and for rotary. So I don't know who... I don't know if anybody knows. I think I remember talking about that sign when I was on city council. I think the history was Rotary and Lions. I think it was a shared. I don't remember the gun club being a part of it, but I do remember that the history had come where the two organizations supported the original sign. But I, I don't know whether than the gun club just directing where they're located right there, but yeah. It does seem like something we should either, you know, there needs to be a maintenance plan for it mm -hmm. or else it should come down right so i don't know if that's us maintaining it yeah i guess that would be my second question maybe reaching out to those organizations to see if they want to take it on mm -hmm. you know i don't know if that's something that the president of rotary who's in the room would want to maybe take back to the club perhaps thought other parts you could take it to building and grounds committee and maybe have a further discussion on upgrading the signage um maybe it's a partnership with rotary in line i mean maybe it's partnership to do something you know updated out there so yeah maybe with the country club looking for signage good to bring it that you brought it up yeah keep, keep asking <laughs> get that resolved okay anything else uh that's all for now Okay. Okay. Um, I don't have anything tonight. City Manager Gertz, do you have anything for public comments or court yep. comments? Um, so I received a phone call from uh, Mrs. Browning, Lisa Browning, um, regarding the Ragbar event. Um, she had concerns with um, the after cleanup process. Mm. Um, and I, I communicated with her. One of her concerns was that there was still debris on the streets and that there was a lot of debris on the sidewalks. And um, she was disappointed that she had to make the phone call to communicate with City Hall with regards to that. I had <clears throat> I, I answered her back to let her know that the street sweeper had been out. Unfortunately, um, it was not able to get all of, it was pancake batter and syrup, mm. and it was not able to get all of that, um, and I did take accountability. I said, I honestly did not think about the sidewalks, mm -hmm. about cleaning the sidewalks, because our street sweeper clearly does not clean sidewalks, too, um, but I sent a message out today to the department heads and asked for their assistance and right away uh, uh, Danny Goodell responded from the water department and so they took the sewer back out which has a, a pressure hose on it and so then they were able to walk down the sidewalk and get it um, hosed off and they even did additional on the street where the sweeper wasn't able to get some of that so we okay. were able to resolve that today the other concern was there was some trash that um, that our staff was not able to get all collected. It was a small amount. I told our at at the uh, on Saturday I had told the street staff that that would be okay if they wanted to come back in early Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. My purpose for that was is that it was an obnoxious amount of trash. Mm -hmm. They had been out. Um, you know, early morning trying to pick up debris from the storm, fixing, you know, putting our 
high lows back up and also then being out to set. And so I explained to her again, I'll take accountability for that because I allowed them to wait because they had been in long hours already. So, um, and then, um, then she had some additional, you know, comments and I recommended that maybe through their RAGBRAI committee that they could put this information together and submit a report to council. So then we could have that documented for future events. So um, that sounds good. And the thing about doing these big events is, you know, it's hard to practice for it, right? Because it's such a rare event and it's so massive, but the more we do it, the better we do get, you know, mm -hmm. and I think overall, I mean, I'm sure there were things that definitely could be improved, but it seems like City just did a really nice job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think all parties, everyone involved, I think everybody did, you know, an amazingly great job considering the amount of participants and then still trying to maintain, you know, traffic needing to go where they needed to go. Absolutely. Um, people not aware that the event was going on. Um, so I, at the end of the day, I think that, you know, everybody did. And I think, and again, I think all of those involved in the communication yeah. process was good. So that's great. And it's probably yeah. a good time just to give a shout out to the Chamber of Commerce and Charles Brooke for leading that. I remember when, when he came in and members of the chamber came in uh, and, you know, we were deciding if we wanted to do this or not, mm -hmm. and it was a huge task to take on. And I was so, I was thinking, Chamber is going to take this on. It's going to work. If they're not going to take it on, there's just you know how else would we do this? So, yep. big huge thanks to the Chamber of Commerce for taking that on and taking the lead on it. City pitched in, bringing in all the employees, um, mm -hmm. you know, over time to make that happen. The emergency services were coordinating for a long time beforehand, yep. getting all that set up and. Um, yeah, Kara really did a good job with oh. volunteers too. Mm -hmm. She was there from sun up, sun down, so. Yeah. I don't know about sundown, but you know what I mean. Yeah. There were a lot of volunteers I saw that were picking up trash throughout and mm -hmm. a lot of high school kids too yeah. that were That's volunteering. Awesome. So that was good to see. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot to come together and coordinate and have it run smoothly without, you know, I mean, you're going to have a little bit of mm -hmm. here and there, but it, again, like I said, I mean, you could have asked for, you know, when, especially when you're getting um, all the responses that we're getting about from the positives of, um, you know, that many people coming through our community and, and leaving that impression. So I think that that in itself was really good. Um, so yeah, outside of that, the only thing I had quickly to follow up was um, with Council Member Schultz uh, did send that information re with regards to the uh, email that you received about the dog and that had been sent over to the police department and I have not had a follow-up to find out more information but I will get that for you. Um, I do have a point to schedule time with Leo to talk about the parallel parking so we can follow up with uh, Brooke Ventures in regards to that question and I also wanted to thank uh, Mr. Reed and Dana reached out to me the night of the storm and gave me um, some updates so that way we were able to coordinate quickly too with our vendor on the outhouses and staff and so we can get those things so I appreciate that and then um, outside of that I think that's you know like I said what we would do is we'll collect some reports from folks on RAGRI and any of that additional information and bring forward so in a excellent report to file so great okay City Clerk Wolford, public comments or correspondence? I've actually had a couple of items and they're all to do with our cemetery. So um, one person called in because there's a tree that was removed in the center of our south addition, our southeast addition, and ants are coming out of it. So I sent Nick down. Nick is going to take a look at it. We still need to grind the stump out of there, but they were going to do some treatment because they were climbing over the stones. Um, he said that he would get that on the list to be taken care of. The other problem was with our columbarium. Mm -hmm. Our columbarium doors that were sent from the company didn't fit. Uh -huh. So the additional ones that they had, um, Mac House did amazing and worked with the company to get them cut down. And now all of our doors are there. In. So okay. it was a huge task. Uh, last Thursday, spent a lot of time trying to get those taken care of. Um, we had one family member who 
had put their loved one in there and the door didn't fit properly. And so we had to make sure that we got everything taken care of. So going forward, we now have the correct size doors because they're all coming off the units. Um, so the additional ones they have up there. Fit. So those are basically the two items that I've had um, where people have had comments or have called in for. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to new business. Uh, item 7A. We're going to handle these just a little bit differently. I was talking with uh, City Clerk Hofford about how to bring these to the table when it says discussion of appropriate action. Previously, we were, we were kind of having a motion to bring it to the table. We'll just discuss it, and then the motion will be, you know, uh, according to what you want to do as a council. So the first one, 7A, is a event assistance and street closure um, request. And I don't know if you want to walk us through kind of what the request is there and this is typical, et cetera. So this is an event request um, and um, from St. Joseph's with regards to, um, I'm sorry, this has to do, they usually have it's a couple of them. Um, Sixth Street between Calhoun and Clay. Yep. I think it's for their annual, um, right. for the walk, right? Uh, I thought it was. It's in September third, yeah. so it's over Labor Day weekend. It's for their annual like um, they do uh, event to fundraiser that they serve food and have yeah. music. They used to do it in downtown. Yep, yeah. but now they moved it in front of the church. Yep, yeah. on six on that block right outside the church, yeah. and it's in coordination with like. Latino the weekend, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's a it's the separate Latino Night Festival because now they hold it at the church versus in the downtown area. Yes, they're two separate entities put right. that together. Right. And this one is specifically the church. Not... This is just the church yeah. this event. Yeah. They yes, yeah. just Catholic Church event. Okay, and that's yes, yeah, that's right in front of the church. I think they started doing this a couple. Last year, for sure. Yeah, it was right after COVID because that's when I think they finally changed and separated the two events. So, and I didn't see that there were any issues with it last year. Okay. Any questions or discussion about that? Yeah. Is there a motion to approve this request? Motion to approve. Second. Moving and second to approve this event assistance assistance and street closure request. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero, followed by 7B. This is a uh, another event assistance and street closure request for August 12th with a rain date of no, August there is no 12th. Rain. Yeah. It's the same date. And this is uh, closing the street between Jeff's Market and what I would call Jan's flower yard. I don't know what property is. In. So Spencer Street, just that Street. one block, right? It's what it looks like between third and that alleyway. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Is it just, I mean, he has it circled one lane. Clearly it's one lane that's circled. So does that mean that they they don't want, I mean, they want the other lane open or they're not using that lane or? Again, I did not have a lot of communication. It was just dropped off to the front office staff. Um, I did communicate and somebody was going to be here. I do not see anyone here though. So I'm not a hundred percent sure I yeah. can. Well, I can work with staff because I think best practice for safety here would be to close the entire, the entire section. Block. And it's similar to what in previous years we did the farmer's market on that section. Mm -hmm. And so I would just recommend that we would follow the same closure that we did and close off um, just that section of Spencer Street. Um, but we're going to have to make sure they coordinate with Jeff's to let them know um, yeah, because the I can talk to Aaron and let him know the that the parking lot yeah. exit is yeah. right there on Spencer. Yeah. Yeah. And so I can go in and make sure we can know to to talk to them and let them know about this date and let them know that there'll be a closure on that section of Spencer. And so just 
for safety purposes, they won't be able to exit from there. They'll have to go down below and exit, which it's worked out in the past. But at the same time, I think it's better to have both sides of the street closed from a safety perspective. Sure. I don't know if they were, I mean, again, it would be a question of, I can't imagine that they were expecting people just to drive up and pick up supplies. That was my only question because it looks yeah. like it's free school supplies. So mm -hmm. that was that was my question is if but they're at actually the same time, to drive through kind of thing. Yeah, but at the right. same time, if that's what they're looking to do, I would still have them manage like with cones for vehicles because I can see traffic coming out of Jeff's or somebody not understanding that and they're causing some. So I think we'd have to look at some traffic control there. Yeah, um, I don't know what to... my recommendation is that they wouldn't be doing a drive through, that it would be you would have to walk up because they're not donating, they're picking up supplies. Hmm. And they also have a tent for refreshments, it looks like. They're probably expecting foot traffic. Mm -hmm. Well, I think City Hall can, you guys can work out mm -hmm. the details here, but yep. uh, are there other questions about? About this or a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second to approve this event assistance and street closure request. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. We have 7C, which is a reimbursement request for Angela Potts a swim lesson they paid for, which they were not able to attend a portion of the swim classes. By the way, my kids go to those swim classes and they are, they're so good. I can hear it from my house. <laughs> Helen Morrison. Dragon, airplane, pencil. Dragon, airplane. So this year I went and watched my kids and learned what the chicken airplane pencil <laughs> move is. It's a lot to watch. <laughs> I mean, she does a good job, Kelly. I mean, those kids, they're they're good swimmers because and it, of it. No mistake, yeah, it's Kelly. <laughs> oh yeah, she, she definitely has the, the voice to project it. Um this uh yeah, I don't did you want to mention anything about this? Lee, um, I mean, I'll quick. refer over to the city clerk because I wasn't part of the okay. conversation. So, yeah, yep. So, I actually spoke. Kara had asked about it earlier. Um, so, it actually was that when she paid, they she thought she was going to have the two weeks, but there wasn't enough funding for both of the weeks. And so, Kelly reached out to her and talked to her. Oh, I see. But all of them. So after the initial opening of the pool, the pool handles all of those swim lessons. That's why it's in here as a request. Typically, you would see an action item from me, but this is a request from the pool since she wasn't able to do it to be able to refund there. So, I mean, city council usually is pretty careful about things like this so that you don't open a door to nitty gritty uh, requests that, like this. What's your recommendation with this specific uh, item? This one, I would... I, my recommendation would be to pay her back for that portion Just because of the way it happened because of how it happened Request and because of how it was so her child actually bought brought the funding to the pool um Kelly stated that their money was more but the child didn't want the change back to carry it so I would recommend that we approve it yeah any other discussion or questions from council is there a motion to approve this reimbursement request? Motion. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the reimbursement request. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Okay, 7D. We have a proposed agreement between the City of West Liberty and Brad Akers for the Meadows development. This is not the actual agreement. That will come later, but uh, this is city managers write up of what you and Brad have worked out Correct. and would like to do. So I'm sure all of you got a chance to to read it. And Lee, I think it's pretty straightforward unless you want to add something. It's, it's I think it's pretty uh no I just entertain if you have any questions pertaining and again as mayor has communicated this is this is just um my request to proceed forward with drafting an agreement uh, with our city attorney. Um, I just wanted to, you know, have that direction from council that to proceed or not to proceed. 
Um, and when this originally started, there was requests for rebate for electric utility, which we do not have that a program in place. And I think I explained that in there, you know, this would expedite, you know, based on that specific project, um, just an agreement to, you know, again, we want to promote housing. Um, this is a form of an affordable housing and, um, you know, and, and design it specific to that project. Yeah. So I, it's my understanding of it is sometimes with a, a build out like this, the utility provider would do it um, either at no cost because they're getting the customers mm -hmm. or at the developer's cost, but then the rebate program would pay the developer back as the customers come online. Correct. And so just so you understand council, that's kind of typically, it's my understanding, those are two typical ways that it's done so that the developer doesn't end up footing the whole bill. This is kind of, if I understand your approach to it is kind of a meet in the middle type of thing because those aren't very, it don't seem very feasible for this project. Mm -hmm. um, is that fair to say? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, for us, I mean, if in the bigger picture of it, Either way, we're going, the city's going to pay for this, mm -hmm. you know, for it. And so for me, I believe that, you know, just being by transparent and upfront and saying, we're going to pay for this upfront and this will be your portion and this will be our portion. And then we're not, you know, having those additional steps to make sure that we've got, you know, a contractual payment set up over a period of time, making sure that we're meeting those. It's just a very clean, um, way again it's it's the city's equipment it's the city's asset um you know we have ownership we have the utility easement um the only thing would be is the labor is the developer's cost for the installation um and the other complicated situation with this is that um this project is not in a position to do tiff um, because the property that the homestead on are not owned by the homeowner. Right. So that's why it that's why it makes it a more unique situation sure. that we want to, you know, look at again, designing an agreement um, around the specific development. That makes sense. I think I think uh, I mean the, the developer would prefer obviously to have city carry all of the cost. And so I think it's worthwhile for, and I, I talked with Brad about this mm -hmm. and he said, he said, I trust Lee and I, you know, he's okay with this. Um, and so I think that's, that's great. Uh, I do think we should consider looking into ways, you know, the city can, we need all the development we can get. So if the city can cover more of that and bring more customers online, I think that's worthwhile trying to see if, if we can do that. Every mayor, I think um, again, I, I, I putting that on our prior, you know, project list yeah, to forward. develop that rebate program, yeah. and you know, look at those um, mm -hmm. opportunities, um, as you stated, and it, and I know that's more discussion to be had with our economic development. You know, putting together packages. We had originally spoke to this as putting together packages based on, you know, the the overall development cost. Um, like, mm -hmm. for example, we can do with, you know, the BIC development where we're looking at a TIF program. So that provides an opportunity for some different direction there where this one, you know, I don't want to say, you know, it's a smaller development, but it still has, you know, it still has a cost to it. So, And yeah. just so council is aware, the, the, and correct me if I'm missing a piece of this, anybody, but um, in this development, it is private. So... The developer is going to own the land. The the folks will own their home, but they'll pay a lot rent uh, for the land. The developer will maintain the streets and all of the infrastructure, water, sewer, and all of the infrastructure except for electric, which is owned by the city and maintained by the city through an easement. I understand that correctly. So the water and the elect, so the water lines and the um, that are the mains would be maintained because it's the city water, electric, or city utility. Um, but the infrastructure within inside the park, inside yeah. the park, yeah. yeah. Yep. I just sure. had a question. It said that potential utility river is five hundred dollar monthly. That seems pretty high to me. 
I was that, just, and I was averaging because okay. a lot of homes, again, you don't know if they're going to have just a family of two, a family of five, or potentially more. Okay. So, you know, and I, you know, looking that from, I don't know, I know that some of our, um, our manufactured homes sometimes have a little higher cost. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's because heating and cooling may be different, but I was just taking an average and okay. averaging that out. Okay. Yeah, it's good to discuss all this because I think, I appreciate your write up here, uh, Lee, because it's helpful to kind of understand your thought process. And I think mm -hmm. it's helpful for us all to understand how this stuff kind of fits together. Mm -hmm. Mr. Brooks, is there anything you'd like to add on this? And I know you've been working on a lot of these development projects just for our education or? Yeah, <clears throat> I think this is a necessary measure, but that, as was as was brought up, this is a band-aid, right? So I would encourage yeah. council to take swift action on something more like that. And then it says 41 homes on number two, but then the, in the last paragraph it says 48 homes. I don't know if that makes sense. It was it probably, it was a typo. Okay. Yep. No, no, it is 40, it, it is eventually yet to be 41 homes. And 41. then I think they have an outbuilding. And yeah, as far as I know, they have an outbuilding too. They have an outbuilding for mm -hmm. um, that will have house a computer with internet. So if there's families that can't have internet at their home, they can use that as a study room. Oh, sounds nice. Yeah. Is it also a shelter or not? Interesting. I like it. Okay, so you're looking for a um, consensus or a motion from council to proceed with writing the development agreement mm -hmm. as you've mm -hmm. outlined here. Is yeah. that fair to say? And okay. I just would add to that the concern that you had addressed with me. I think that um, with drafting this agreement, I can speak to the electric superintendent and see if he could provide me, you know, and some type of an idea of what hours yeah so we can put something in the agreement um that maybe would also help um with the developer to to know that these are the estimated hours so that way they have a better understanding of what we're looking at from that perspective i think that's a good idea uh, mr Akers had said the only concern he had was that he'd like to know since he's paying the labor costs kind of what is he getting into there mm -hmm. um which obviously makes sense. I would always ask for an estimate before I sign up for a project. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that, that would be great if yeah. I could just be included. Yeah. And the number three, the fee for tapping, do we need to put a fee, like an actual number on there? We have an actual fee um, for that. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to have, I needed an opportunity to go back through historic um, communications because I do not know what had originally been communicated in there. Oh, so that was- But I'll make sure right? that we okay. put that- um, okay. I mean, and I don't want to say right off shooting from the, you know, right off the top of my head, but we can make sure that we present that in there. If it's already been paid for, you know, these are the costs that you've already covered so far mm -hmm. for that tapping fee. And okay. yeah, sounds good. Makes sense. I would also include in here, I will probably, I will want to also document there has been um, numerous engineer costs uh, because the city has covered those engineer costs going back and forth. Um, trying to work through electric. Um, and then we also had um, engineer studies from, and I think it will be good also from our side of it to show Mr. Akers, you know, our, the city's investment total um, for these. I'm not trying to say, you know, we want you to, sure. we, I no. just want him, the, any developer to understand, you know, these are a lot of these preliminary costs or costs that the city's already invested in mm -hmm. um, to make this a successful development as our partnership with the developer. Mm -hmm. So we have, and likewise with council, so we have a full understanding and there's that transparency of what the overall cost total um, for that project, so. That makes sense. I know this is taking a lot of work, just catching up and getting all these development projects uh, rolling and sorting out problems, so. Thanks for diving into that, Lee. Mm -hmm. um, any other discussion or questions about that? Otherwise, uh, I, would, I think we're looking for a motion to authorize city manager to proceed as written. Motion to I will authorize city manager to proceed as discussed, written, second. 
Okay, it's moved and seconded to uh, authorize City Manager Hurst to proceed with this development agreement as she is delineated here. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. And all opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. We have item 70, a resolution to disperse the additional 25,000 to we lead as proposed in the 23-24 budget. Is, is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded to approve this resolution. Uh, any discussion? I think this is straightforward. You approved it in the budget to additional uh, add some additional funding to we lead. So Mr. Mayor, we're um, putting this through in a resolution because it is a separate payment from the city outside of our already established um, tax increment finance funding. So that way we have a clear record that the finance, the, the taxes, property taxes, supporting that um, portion of the 53, oh boy, 53, 53 and some change. Um, that's a part of our tax yeah. increment. And then this is the utility side doing the additional funding. Because again, with economic development increases, utility revenue. Um, historically, that's where it used to 100% came from. And then we were able to move towards utilizing some tax dollars for economic development, but um, at our discussion for our budget, we, we've definitely seen the support um, where we could look at doing some additional funding. So this 25 is coming straight from the electric fund? Electric, water, and oh, utilities. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, because that would be the potential revenue that we would be receiving off of um, the developments that we're going to be looking at, the work that um, the economic development we need has put forward. Um, so that is um, our way of paying it forward to them for that work that they sure. put into marketing and, and building those developments. Mr. Brooks, anything you'd like to add? You know, the organization, they're grateful for the city support. Happy to be your partner. I was teeing it up for you to plug the podcast. You want to plug the podcast? <laughs> Have you heard the podcast? Building together, yeah, that we need to work on. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're grateful that uh, for everything you're doing that we lead. We have a motion and a second to approve this resolution. Uh, any further discussion? It's a roll call vote. Council Member McFerrin, yes, Council Member Dominguez, yes, Council Member Schultz, yes. The motion carries three to zero. 7F. A resolution to approve the purchase of a Bobcat E35 mini activator for the streets department. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded to approve this resolution. Looks like uh, they were going to buy a, a, a large truck, was mm -hmm. available this year, and are instead going to try for that next year mm -hmm. and instead buy this uh, Bobcat. Very versatile piece of equipment to us. Do we know why is it Ford at Stanford or the state? Um, I wonder if company cancels the So bill. yeah, they canceled. Um, we don't we don't have an explanation as to why or how it got canceled, but it did. So what we did, so what Adam um, recommended is that we would move this equipment um, up in our equipment revolving plan. We'll just flip flop years. Yeah. Because this was going to be on their list. Yeah. Correct. The only thing I have to say is there's a typo in the title under Bobcat. Yeah. Bobcat. Mm -hmm. If it matters. Well, it's a small one. Mm -hmm. So we'll call it a Bobcat instead of okay. <laughs> yeah, the official nickname of this view. <laughs> Bobcat. And thank you. <laughs> like Bob yeah. There you go. Um, this will definitely be helpful. Um, I, you know, through our discussions, um, we're working, trying to um, training staff and working staff to get back to performing um, some of the uh, work that we contract in with um, Lynch Plumbing or individuals of uh, doing that, you know, excavating for um, sewer water and um, likewise with the streets that they have, because um, we have seen um, some more cave-ins due to some drainage underneath that we don't always see right away. And so, I mean, it, again, it's a very valuable, valuable piece of equipment yes. that can be used throughout um, our department. So. Send cake, send out, send cake. Yep. yep. 
Uh, we have a motion and a second to approve this resolution. Any further discussion? If none, it's a roll call vote. Councilmember Schultz? Yes. Councilmember Dominguez? Yes. Councilmember McFerrin? Yes. The motion carries three to zero. We have 7D, a resolution setting the wage for the electric department journeyman lineman 2023 land of war at $40 an hour, non exempt. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor and Council, um, it was brought to my attention that there was um, some pre negotiation um, with uh, Mr. DeVore returning back to the city. Um, as an employee, he was separated for um, a, a temporary period of time and um, and looked at the opportunity when we had posted for a position. Um, so there had been pre-negotiations between previous city manager, electric superintendent, and the employee um, regarding the um, wage. Upon review of um, doing the research on salary surveys and looking at um, the government salary for that, um, the $40 an hour is a medium range for uh, Mr. Moore's position. So it's in line with um, what the hourly rate would be. He is a certified, and it's also that the city, we invested in that employee. Um, the certification came through the city. It was at the city's cost. So to be able to, you know, have the employee back from that investment um, and retain that employee, that, that's a value within itself. And um, What's the total staff in the electric department now at this point? We have four. Mr. Tivers mm -hmm. and three. Three under him. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a full staff? Um, there is you we're going to move to it was approved that there would be an additional staff member brought on um with regards um to a succession plan within that department. Um, because we have one employee that you know will be looking to retire in some years. So the discussion has been to bring on an additional staff member to start doing the succession. Okay. Um, we have a current, one of the current employees is a, uh, a journeyman apprentice when you have Ryan and Ed are the only certified journeyman that we have. John is the, um, he's a mechanic for the, the diesel engines, but I don't want to just say that's all he does because John, is you know a jack of all trades when it comes to you know specific things, but there are some things that he he simply can't do because he's not a certified certified So okay, we have a motion and a second to approve this resolution. Is there any further discussion? If none, it's a roll call vote. Council Member Schultz. Yes. Council Member Dominguez. Yes. Council Member McFerrin. Yes. The motion carries three to zero. We have a resolution accepting the plans for the Meadows development built as is with recommendations from the Planning and Zoning Commission. So we're going to go back to the Meadows here. Um, is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. It's moved and seconded to approve this resolution. And I would ask that you walk us through where we are on this because I think this part has been very confusing for for all certainly for me um, with changes and how we're coming back to this. So why are we seeing this again, or what's the? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I don't know. We've actually ever seen these before, but. So, uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, for my review, going through the documentation um, over the site plan and the drainage study. And again, just making sure that we dotted the I's and crossed the T's as we're you know, working through the process. Um, I was unclear on the, the, the project itself being a private property and how it was presented yeah. in that manner. So we received some clarification on that piece of it. However, when it was originally put before the Board of Adjustments for the type of homes and the site plan that was presented, the, the, drain, the drainage or the collection basin 
was on the opposite side of the site plan. It was originally placed on Columbus. And um, as it's built now, the drainage basin is now on Calhoun. It needed to be larger, I think, for that what the engineering. Is that what they so mean? it's my understanding that the purpose that it was switched was there was nowhere for that basin to connect into the city's sewer system because on Columbus, there is not a connection for that sewer. However, on Calhoun, there is a connection for that. And so that was my understanding as to why that basin was switched. Okay. Um, I just have some follow up and we spoke to Mr. Akers um, because the basin sits adjacent to the public sidewalk and the street. Um, so there's just, again, there'll be some follow up discussion. I've been working with the building inspector um, mm -hmm. asking maybe for fencing or something. So if we have folks walking along the sidewalk or somebody goes off the street, they don't, you know, they don't land in that basin. And it's supposed to, it's intended to be a dry basin. So the only time that that will be full is if we have a huge amount of rain. So that basin is intended to be dry unless we have large amounts of rain. And even when we don't though, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty deep basin <laughs> to tumble off into. You kind of sit right up against the cemetery, right? The north. Okay, any other questions? We have a motion and a second to approve this resolution. Any further discussion? If none, if the roll call vote, Councilmember Schultz? Yes. Councilmember Dominguez? Yeah. Councilmember McFerrin? Yes. The motion carries three to zero. Item 7I, resolution to accept the agreements between the USAR and the City of West Liberty for We Care. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Moving and seconded to approve this resolution. Uh, this is an exciting project. The first city in the nation, I understand, to have a partnership like this. And uh, Councilmember Dominguez, you've done a lot of work on this. Would you want to just again, and we've talked about this a few times, but just sure. kind of again, just to catch us up to speed on it? Yeah. So there's two agreements one with the company that the um, Department of Defense is providing the funds for, which is We Care. Um, and then this is the part of the agreement from the Department of the Defense um, on their terms. So we we already approved the We Care agreement, how we're going to partner with that company. And now this is the one um, for the United States government. And just to recap, I know you've all heard this, but um, basically they're partnering with us so that we can provide um, resources, uh, child care funding for any uh, active U.S. National Guard or IRA Reserve members for their family. Um, within 100 miles of West Liberty. Pretty neat program. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, it is very neat. And, uh, and a group of us will be going to Washington, D.C. Yes. Yes. on August. It, the ceremony is August 17th. So um, for a signing ceremony. Yeah. Pretty neat um, thing. That's a feather in the feather in the cap of, of the city, for sure. And I did reach out um, to the Iowa National Guard representative, and I'll continue to work. Um, with um, the United States government through the National Guard Affairs and the Reserves, um, and likewise with the readiness NCOs through um, a lot of our our military um, units, so we can make sure that we're getting it this information marketed um, to yeah. those folks. So fantastic. We have a motion and a second to approve this resolution. Any further discussion or question? So the, the highlighted stuff is just things that will be filled in. Correct. Right. Correct. Yeah. That's it. I have to say that at, at the local level, we don't often have agreements that have include a signature line for someone signing for the United States. Mm -hmm. I saw that at the week. Pretty neat. Yeah, it's definitely... Definitely new. 
Okay, again, we have a, a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Any further discussion? It's a roll call vote. Council Member Schultz. Yes. Council Member Dominguez. Yes. Council Member McFerrin. Yes. The resolution, the motion passes uh, three to zero. We are striking item 7J as we did in the, uh, in the beginning, moving on to 7K, the resolution to approve the schedule for the public hearing bidding and estimate of cost for the Nine Circle and Division Street project. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded to approve this resolution. Um, Mr. Foley, is that your mandatory? Yes. Okay, so that's the one where we we basically took out Gibson Street and we said we'll do Gibson Street next year. There's problems with the sewer and some other things. The cost that we've done so far is I believe 270. Mm -hmm. Number uh, two hundred and seventy-eight thousand dollars. So what we want to do tonight is just basically approve going forward with the, that design. That design is going to include sidewalk on one half of Division Street, not the other half, until we get the um, the, the right of way in place. The east half of Division. We haven't approached landowners or anything like that until you give us the approval to go forward. Um, there are a couple of the very large trees that will have to be removed. Um, my surveyor says one of them look like they'll probably be happy with them to remove it, but you never know until you knock on the door. And we haven't done that yet. So we wanted to get approval to move forward, and then we bring this back August 15th when we have the plans and specs complete. You bring it back when you have the plans and specs complete. So the the plans that we're seeing here, the draft, are pretty preliminary. Well, I'd say they're in the we we we're in the eighty to ninety percent range. So, are you saying that you are going to proceed with uh, with building the sidewalk all the way? I mean, is that the on, plan? I on, think you're going to on the try to get that on the right east way. side of division sidewalk goes the whole way. Right mm -hmm. on the west side. When we come back and do Gibson, we could do that, but we have probably a lot more. We have to purchase right away for that. We can't do that now, though, while we're doing this street. We could do it now, but you wouldn't, you'd have to delay bids. You wouldn't be able to keep on this schedule. And that usually takes a little more time. Well, can we start it now? Because otherwise, as soon as we do Gibson next next well, year, we're going to do the same thing. We, we <laughs> could start it now. You know what I mean? We can start the process. We start the process right. so that it's ready. We start when the process. But we should. It's it's funding because when we originally did this capital improvement, no, project, I understand yeah. that's why we cut Gibson, yeah, because right? yeah. of the funding, yeah. But I wonder if we could start the process of that getting that right away sorted out. We so are in that good. process as we speak. So I've had my surveyors getting more survey because they they're not pleased with what we get when we think it's a temporary easement. When they know they have to do acquisition, they want more pins so they can be perfect. So we are in that process. So what we'd like to do is come back to you on the 15th with plans and specs, and then we could probably also have a, a easement type drawing or not an acquisition type drawing for you to look at that would show exactly how much you have to acquire. And when you acquire that, what's it going to do to that Mm -hmm. neighbor's fence. And don't mm -hmm. we need to talk about that stuff in post session with their attorney? Mm -hmm. or no, that's about that, purchasing land. That, well, that can be a public discussion okay. um, for the purpose of, of the right-of-way mm -hmm. um, for use of public right-of-way. Okay. Um, so Making sure. <laughs> no, no, that's a good question. It's yeah, a good it question. Um, but we just don't want to find ourselves in a position where, um, you know, most of your landowners. How valuable is that pro property to? Most of your landowners start to know pretty quickly what's going on because they yeah. see our surveyors surveying, and believe me, he's asked a million questions <laughs> all the time. What are you doing this for? What's going? On? Obviously, yeah. that's a uh, delicate. But I think we there, but it's part of living in a city that we kind of agree on. But I think if we could go out for plans and specs and get the get the Gibson Street and the Division Street improvements done or underway and not stop on getting the, the land acquired would be very wise. Because like you said, mm -hmm. land can land being acquired, I've seen it many times, it becomes the holdup. So we don't want it to be the holdup next year. Next so year would be my concern. Yeah, so if we keep plugging away now to yeah. keep trying to get it. 
And then we'll allow it to enter into our budget. So we're building our budget, uh, yeah. you know, based on those. Yeah. I do have another question. That sorry. sounds good. I do have no, I, I interrupted you, Lee. Sorry. I do have another question about um about sidewalk. Are, are sidewalks being redone at all on the, like on Naughty Circle or that just the ADA portion? So whenever we had to change ADA to make sure they were ADA accessible. So any of the ramps going onto the sidewalks, the sidewalks themselves were left alone. What about um so two two intersections I wanted to ask you about division and naughty circle drive. That intersection looks like it's been done. It looked like it was done. I don't know how long ago, but if you go out there and look at it, it's definitely newer concrete. Maybe did city do those ADA ramps already? Maybe um, they did. Well, my only question about it is, and that maybe this is. Um, not maybe this is out of scope or whatever for what we're doing here, but I feel like it would be most appropriate if the division street sidewalks continued to cross Naughty Circle Drive right there, even though it's a T, you know, as it is right now. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I looked at that too. I feel like I've you see those intersections, you know, and you're 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 riding your bike along the sidewalk and you want to get there, but there's no actual no actual crossing unless you were to go all the way down around the circle or all the way down to Elm Street. So what you're saying is make it cross the road, which does mean we need um, four more accesses, four more street access to come up onto the sidewalk, which isn't isn't the end of the earth. We can put those in. I mean, that would be my recommendation. It will drive yeah. that price up a little. Not, not right there. <laughs> you're, you're on the I'm the engineer. I say it can be done. And I love the engineer. That's where you're going to cross. And there's no sidewalk there. There's, there's sidewalk this way, but there's no there's no way to cross. There's no crossing right here or there. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's no sidewalk right there. Gotcha. Mr. Mayor, my recommendation is, is if we can have Mr. Foley take a look at what you're requesting, then we have an additional cost because we really the only reason the budget. I understand what you're saying, yeah. the budget. And the reason we didn't do it, now that I'm looking at it, it, it's clearly new concrete, newer concrete. So we would have been tearing up new concrete to do it. Not saying it's something you shouldn't be done. I understand why you would want to do it. That makes sense. I guess... Uh, um, I guess my question would be, if not now, then when, right? And so, yeah. why don't why don't we come back and on the fifteenth? Mm -hmm. We'll have a we could have a cost for you and have it that we could add it in as an alternate at that time if you want. That sounds good. That sounds good. Okay, we got my questions out. Anybody else? All right, we have a uh, motion and a second to approve this resolution. The schedule for the public hearing, bidding, and estimate cost for non circle and division seat project. Any further discussion? Uh, Council Member Schultz? Yes. Council Member Dominguez? Yes. Yeah. Council Member McFerrin? Yes. The motion carries three to zero. We have item 7L, a resolution approving the travel expenses to the Pentagon for the signing of the We Care agreement. Is there a motion to approve? And then we'll talk about this in a minute. Is there a second? Second. Okay, it's moved and seconded to approve this resolution. So, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. I think so. They would. They've asked the Department of Defense has invited representatives from city to be there to sign this agreement at the mm -hmm. Pentagon. Um, uh, Councilmember Dominguez is the reason why this happened, and so mm -hmm. she should be there. Uh, mm -hmm. City Manager Gertz should be there, and also is very familiar with what child care for a military family would mean. Uh, as 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 are you, I believe as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they invited me there mm -hmm. undeservedly, but because I'm the mayor. Mm -hmm. And so I, I uh, accepted that. 
And I believe you also invited our economic development representative to join us as well. So it's the four support of us who are looking at going. Um, and that's what the that's what that's for. That sounds good to everybody. Yeah. And I just want to add how important it is to talk about our community with people that are in really high places like this. Because if it weren't for, you know, NPR coming and doing interviews with us. The person in California would have never heard about West Liberty and they would have never contacted me for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I just think the more we're able to, you know, go and put ourselves around these tables with these people who are looking to give money to communities like ours is um, an opportunity we just wouldn't pass up. And on another scale from a military base uh, or lack of being on a military mm -hmm. base, it's important for those leaders to also understand the impact and the support of a community to um, the reserve and the National Guard members who live and work, you know, in our community and what we're willing to do in that support. Um, because um, the National Guard and the reserves rely a lot on that community support around them in order to make a successful you know, support of those individuals that are serving for that time, making sure that we have that, yeah. you know, organization and support within our local communities. So it's it's a, a, a partnership that gets forgot about or overlooked many times because we're busy in our day-to-day -day lives and, you know, we're not necessarily always caught up in, you know, more on a national level of the news versus people that are our neighbors um, that live and work, not just in our communities, but our surrounding and rural areas too. Definitely a high profile moment for the uh, city of West Liberty. Um, this is not to exceed $5,000 is the travel expense request. There's a motion and a second to approve this resolution. Any further discussion? And I would just add, I, that is a pretty high number. I've already been able to um, negotiate under that with some special government reading on two of our airline tickets and our stay, and we would not have to use, um, we, we can utilize public transportation because I was able to get us within six minutes from our destination that's there. So, um, so I've been working really diligently to try to make sure, you know, minimizing the cost yeah. for the event, so. Absolutely. Any further discussion? And as long as Councilmember Dominguez doesn't mind that I won't change clothes the whole time that they're there, I'll say, just kidding. <laughs> I won't tell if you won't. Okay. <laughs> Should Councilmember Dominguez abstain from this? Would you recommend that since she's going to be traveling or or we can't do that? Yeah, no, no, no you would have to. Yeah. Okay. Well, and That's again, I mean, she's not, yeah, she's, she's more than just her herself. Yeah. So Fair she enough. would be okay. If the roll call vote, Councilmember Schultz. Yes. Councilmember Dominguez. Yes. Councilmember McFerrin. Yes. Motion carried three to zero. And we have lastly 7M, resolution to accept change order number three, red one, in the amount of $67,750.50 to add to the Columbus Street sidewalk improvements. Is there a motion to approve this resolution? Motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the resolution. Mr. Foley, if you'd uh, want to. So the last time I told you it was like um, $7,000 higher than that. And we looked at two things to try to get the price down. One, we looked at trying not to move the fire hydrant. Yeah. And basically what we found out is because of the grades, we'd still have to adjust the fire hydrant. And then we'd have to make the ramp longer for the sidewalk to become ADA accessible. And we thought the cost would be the same. You might as well move the fire hydrant. You'll have a way better product. So we decided not to recommend moving the fire, to not recommend not moving the fire hydrant. The not next recommend not moving. Forward. Yes, not not. <laughs> the next one was a one that's caught me before and it caught me again. Um, I noticed right away that the seating seemed high, and I think I mentioned it to you at the last council. So I had my best engineer look at it. He looked at the AutoCAD file and he redid the quantities and said the quantities are right. They're exactly right on the plans that because he didn't do it. One of our CAD techs did it. And he said, no, it's perfect. So I sent it to you guys. And it still bothered him and it bothered me because I was like, it's just something's not right. And so what happened was the, 
the contractor had an early set of plans that we didn't have it right on. And we had put it in square yards instead of cubic yards. So we had it as 2,220 square yards. When we made the final plan sent to the contractor and sent to the state, we had changed it to 247. Jay Simon used his older plans and used the 2220 and we didn't catch it because it just all looked right. The amount was the same amount he was paying on his other one. Mm -hmm. So then I caught, I, Eric, caught it at about 445 today. He said, hey, I found your mistake. <laughs> and I said, oh, it's not too late. <laughs> I haven't left yet. <laughs> so at five o'clock, I fired off an email. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. <laughs> Five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> Not here. Uh, I said I think we uh, I think we found at least part of it. So I, I do still recommend. And I, I would like to tell you too that even if we, you would have approved it, theoretically you would not have paid it because that's a measurable item. Our inspectors measure, and so they would have been measuring and saying, I don't know how you goofy engineers came up with the wrong number, but here's what we're paying. So that has. Happen. But at least now you know. So it's very, very, cl it's closer to what the estimate was. It's, we think you should go forward. We think we should get this done. This does have two issues going on. One is the state of Iowa's DOT still hasn't approved. They will as soon as I push them. And we have some landowner issues now, opposite of the one on, um, on Gibson and uh, Division, in that you're the, the, um, Right of way is on DOT property, okay. not on anybody else's property. So people won't like it, but they won't be able to stop it. Installing the sidewalk along Columbus is where that's come up. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. But, um, but you could get some. Um, you could get some um, emails of people not being pleased. Sure. And, and one in particular, I don't. I don't know of others that would be, but one particularly I talked to. Okay. Appreciate you having those conversations. Yeah. I feel like, uh, well, you know how I feel about the sidewalk. <laughs> I do have a question about this yeah. sidewalk, though. Um, so, and this is probably just because I don't understand quite how it works, but like this is this is going all the way. I'm looking at the map here along Columbus Street and connecting to the Rainbow Drive Thank you. <laughs> intersection. So you can be walking on the nice lighted ten foot wide trail. From Dutton, you cross Rainbow Drive if you wanted to, um, you know, walk down to Geary DP or to yeah. JB's. Um, how would you walk to Subway? Is my question. Is that something where they would need to put in their own sidewalk to intersect with this? Or how would you, because right now I'm at the ball field with my team and you see the subway right up the street there and you say, let's go eat at Subway. With this plan, the only way to get to, get to Subway is by walking in the street and through the grass. Yeah, so typically we put sidewalks, trails on public property. And so that a business would typically have to send a sidewalk to it. So that would be the normal way. Yeah, we would do this, and then they would say, "Okay, we're going to like to attach to it, so we can get people there." They don't have to, but and it's not the only way. The city could do it, but city could do it, include it in the plan, and just pay for it. And well, you'd be on somebody else's property, though, so you'd have to get property approval. Yeah, and it's. What, all right, wait, I'm, not, uh, I'm not the city manager, but I've got to say, because I run into it all the time, it does set a precedent that you will usually get others uh, wondering why you did that when, when you don't want to do it with somebody else. Sure. Yeah, that, 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 that comes up a lot in my business. Yeah, why don't you give me a sidewalk? Oh, right. Well, I'm assuming they would get tired of people walking through their grass. <laughs> they very much could, right? I mean, I hope, I don't know who owns that subway, but I, might, I hope they would. Mm -hmm. But the only thing the city could do is take the sidewalk up to the driveway, right up the, uh, right up the right of way. So you still stay in our right of way up to their driveway. And then you're dropping them off onto the driveway. It's not ideal. Ugly. I mean, yeah, yeah. ideal. 
And it's either. not even safe, truthfully. Yeah. It's not That's the thing, yeah. I don't know if I'm delivering to the driveway. I would just leave it and let them walk over the grass until somebody decides not to. The owner has always has been very good to work with. I mean, it's yes. something that we could certainly open a discussion up with them. Um, you used you to know. have a program for yeah. redoing sidewalks, mm -hmm. but, but we don't have a program for the yeah. or for installing sidewalks. And there's several portions of city where that needs to happen. Certain, you know, undeveloped lots and things like mm -hmm. that that really need to be looked at. But so this kind of made it fall into. So I did another another thought could be mm -hmm. um, to. You did get a good bid on Rainbow. I'm not against this at all. Would be to take the sidewalk up, like I said, and have a deal with him that he brings it from there to along the grass to his door. Yeah. So the the door you're so you're saying the line that's in the, the front of their building, right, goes all the way down to Rainbow Drive, and then we come along the road to connect. You'd, you to you'd come up to the road to maybe right at the edge of that. Uh, where the parking lot is and then he would drive, take a sidewalk from his doorway straight across his grass to to match where the city would come up to she isn't it a she no oh, i thought it was a she do you think we could just reach out and talk to the owner and see what they mm -hmm. We could set yeah, up. We, we could set a meeting with them. I think well, it's a partnership. So oh. how they would want to approach that. I think we as yeah. council would probably. I, I have his information. If you don't, don't. Oh no, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> He's a pretty verbal guy. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. No, I think that would be a good move though to reach out to him and say, hey, maybe we could we could take the sidewalk up the up the city park. You need to just push winter. Well, because no, I mean, that's going to be a nightmare during winter to yeah. have to. Right. Well, and just with what the mayor's saying, I mean, the benefit is, is that you have individuals that are at the complex that are going to be hungry. Mm -hmm. And this is a marketing thing, too, is that, you know, you're, you're providing a safe, you know, walkability to, right mm -hmm. to your door. Yes. Um, and so, I mean, from that perspective, and then, like Leo said, you know, further discussion of saying, we'll meet you somewhere in the middle, you know, mm -hmm. but again, see what that happens. Because sometimes what I'm, we have to make it very clear is that once we do this, then they also have the responsibility of maintaining it. Right. Because sometimes there's a confusion saying, well, you put it in, I didn't, you know, so, mm -hmm. but those are some things that we can, uh, I can uh, open up a discussion. Even, even this sidewalk that we have along his property, um, it will probably become a, in the winter, who's going to plow that? It Correct. will become an issue. Yeah. Will it become or it's known? It's that would be the property owner's responsibility. It might be known, but no, none of them will agree to it and like it, mm -hmm. on, especially something like this on yeah. the side, yeah. like that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've done a lot of, <laughs> I've done sidewalks in people's backyards because of the way it works, and they almost always fight it because they're, they're used to that sidewalk in their front yard. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I think this, I mean, and if I owned, <laughs> Again, you know how I feel. If I own the subject, there'd be sidewalks all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, direct sidewalks from downtown. You, to you know, and if that conversation I, comes up, I mean, if they're contracting somebody to plow their parking lot, I mean, so yeah. it's an additional, yeah. okay, and have them clear your sidewalk too at the same time. Yeah, I think yeah. We're, so we'll, we can, we'll we can open it up. Just for a second. The community center is a great example of this. The community center invested. Um, eighteen and a half thousand dollars, I believe it was, to redo their sidewalk that's along the highway, mm -hmm. and frankly connects to other portions of the sidewalk that are um, that that need work. But but they wanted to really do their side right, and it involved putting in a new culvert and um, a lot of work. It's not a small project, and they invested in it, and. Did it right for the for the community, you know, and I think that's the kind of thing that we want to encourage here. So we need to we all pitch in to make the city walkable, safe, and healthy. We have a motion and a second to approve this resolution. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Council Member Schilt. Yes. Council Member Dominguez. Yeah. Council Member McFerrin. Yes. Motion carries. Zero.
Oh, is that the motion to adjourn? Um, one moment. Just real quick, I wanted to add, um, I had just got this today, the final discussion um, from All American about closing the streets. Um, so I'm just gonna give my that email. Um, if you wanna talk to it a little bit, um, we started a discussion over a week ago, um, trying to move up a timeline for completing our, um, completing the project. So this is, an opportunity that we presented with um, Mr. Heath, um, coordinating with activities at Dutton. Um, but as you can see here, what they're talking about is, um, and I'll let Leo speak more to it because the Leo B and K confirmed the plan. So well, we um, we've been talking to All American, trying to get them to discuss how to. Make sure they keep the schedule, this project on schedule. So they really would like to get Rainbow open completely. They like to pay full width. We told them that they had to keep one lane open at all times. We have already been letting them do it at certain times as long as they make them make make things to it. So here they wanted to do full width. We told them that if they wanted to do full width, they had to keep traffic open to the Dutton Park at all times. So that's what the red line through is a gravel access that will get you up Maxon to the park 100% of the time. And I thought that was a good move on their part. And then that also says they can pull, they can, they can pay full width. So they're thinking they will be done by the end of August with the road part of Mm -hmm. Rainbow will be completely open at that time, not the trail and not some of the stuff we're doing on Max. Because it's easy, easier doing the whole thing than half of it and then half of it. And right? It is, and, and, and to their defense, I do think you get a better product mm -hmm. because now you get their full width paving and it does look better and everything else. So mm -hmm. I recommend going forward. I think we talked to Nick and Adam and they, mm -hmm. they were satisfied that with this program that they can get traffic in and out of Dutton, there won't be any issues there. The one call you might get is somebody coming from the east that that road will be shut down now and they have to go around. Mm -hmm. But again, what we'll, we'll have them sign it well ahead of time. And what we find out is that usually the city manager fields mm -hmm. one or two calls, people figure it out and it gets done. How so? How are the people that live out in the country there? Yeah. Well, they have to go to the all the way around to the highway that's that right. goes to Adelaide. Yeah. Yes, that's how that happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's a temporary, um, in order. I mean, it the end Probably result yeah. is yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they might have. They we told them. We didn't specify which way, but we specified you have to keep one lane of traffic open. Mm -hmm. So the way they were going to do that, they might have had to go around anyway, because mm -hmm. they probably were going to keep traffic open this way. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. But they probably would have had to, mm -hmm. and and this shortens that time period. Yeah. Well, okay. then Josh, you were saying something. Oh, just financial definitely help with that. Yeah, I know there's a lot of speeding along that route right? too, mm -hmm. especially where the gravel hits the. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that could be some expensive concrete if they're not paying attention. Yeah, well, he, already, he already has it on the other side. When we did that a very long time ago, right in front of Bill Simon's house, yeah. they paved it. Mm -hmm. like they went to bed that night thinking they did a good job, and somebody drove through barricades mm -hmm. and into their thing. And you can still see the marks where they had to redo it. <laughs> I think I've seen those. In there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go look at that again now. That. Uh, that's, that's, that happens. What I, what I, I thought was humorous is that it was a, the, yeah. the guy that the did it was the... sitting in his bedroom right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, I mean, uh, communication with uh, yeah. social media website. And, um, you know, if any council member or mayor, if you have any other additional, but um, again, the contractors will put up the signage yeah. and detour information yeah. pertaining to that. And, Sounds like there's a consensus with that. But... Okay, mm -hmm. we're ready to go. Thank okay. you. Yep. Thank you. Anything else? Move to adjourn. Second. Move to seconds to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.